Another way to prevent uh, physical blindness is to eat right. Studies have shown that there are certain foods that are very good for the eyes and can help protect your eyesight. Foods like carrots, spinach, and blueberries help the eyes. On the other hand, foods that are high in processed sugar, which can contribute to diabetes, can lead to the blurring of vision and even blindness. So if we want to prevent physical blindness, we have to watch what we consume. We have to eat the right foods and avoid the foods that are harmful. The same is true within the spiritual world. We need to consume those things that are good for our spirits and avoid the things that do harm. In this morning's parable, the rich man's life was characterized by his excessive consumption, his expensive clothes, and his daily feasts. He was the dream come true of every advertiser. There was no balance in his life. He, had he spent less of his time in fine clothing and food and more of his time in getting to know the man who was living right outside of his gates, there may have been some hope for his spiritual blindness. If he had spent less time with himself and more time with God, I think he would have felt the Spirit urging him toward the suffering that was right under his nose. His spiritual diet focused only on his personal satisfaction, on what made him feel good about himself. There is no indication that his spirituality had anything to do with God or his neighbor. The media floods our senses with advice about making us feel good. Exercises and diets for improving our appearance, tips on how to relieve stress, clothes that promise will look just like the model who, who models them. Vacation getaways that help us escape from our boring lives for just a little while. Too much consumption in these areas of our lives is like a diet of cupcakes, cookies, and candy bars. We need to reduce these things or at the very least balance them with good things to prevent spiritual blindness. Spending time with God, volunteering our time to help another, these are the things that will prevent spiritual blindness. Loving God with all our heart and all our soul and all of our mind and loving our neighbor as ourselves. If our diet includes more loving others and less self-satisfaction, then we have hope for avoiding spiritual blindness. The final thing that we should do to avoid physical blindness is to get a checkup. Our vision can deteriorate so slowly that we don't notice it until it's too late. Early detection of weakening eyesight can help prevent serious problems in the future. The rich man in this morning's parable isolated himself from the world. He lived his life behind a wall. I wonder that he may have been able to avoid his problems, had he been more connected with people who cared about his spiritual welfare, with people who tried to improve their own spiritual welfare. One of the most popular reasons I hear from people who aren't a part of a faith community is, I can worship God on my own. I don't need to go to church. And I always respond by telling them, that's true but you can't be in community on your own. A faith community is vital to spiritual health. Without it, we can convince ourselves that we are just too busy to help someone else. We can convince ourselves that we don't have enough resources 
to help someone else. We can convince ourselves that our opinion is the truth and any other opinion is a lie. We can even convince ourselves that others deserve the suffering they may be experiencing. But if we live in a faith community, if we go to church on a regular basis, we, re we receive a spiritual checkup. And each Sunday before receiving communion, we have the opportunity to examine our lives and see where things need to change in them. When we make a point of examining our lives within the context of other people, we're doing what we need to avoid spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness is a pandemic disease that's sweeping the globe. It can have dire consequences as our rich man discovered in our parable. But it can be avoided if we do a few simple things. I've talked about some of those things this morning. Now it's up to each of us to put those things into place within our own lives. Amen.